Thank you, Chairman, dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends. I am Dr. Hisawa Samura at the KU University Hospital Tokyo. First, I would like to express my gratitude to the AATS for the great opportunity. On behalf of JCO, Japan Clinical Oncology Group, and WJOG, West Japan Oncology Group, I'd like to present the results of the prospective randomized trial to compare segmentectomy with lobectomy for small size peripheral lung cancer. I also express my cordial thanks to uh, Professor Nasar Toki for joining this session as a distinguished discusser. This is my disclosure of COI. I'd like to start with some background of this study. Lobectomy is still the standard mode of surgery, even for a small site, peripheral non-small cell lung cancer, since the landmark study of North American lung cancer study group, which was conducted in the late 1980s. This prospective study is trying to devise the comparison between lobectomy and segmentectomy to demonstrate the advantage of the lesser dissection over lobectomy in terms of post-operative survival and the post-operative pulmonary function. This slide shows the outline of the trial. A key inclusion criteria was a clinical stage 1A peripheral non-small cell lung cancer or suspected nodule with a maximum diameter of two centimeter or less. Criteria also included a consolidation tumor ratio higher than 0.5, where on the left side of this slide, the definition of CT ratio is shown as a ratio of consolidation part to the whole tumor, including grand grass opacity. During surgery, patients were randomly assigned to receive either one of the lobectomy, arm A, or segmentectomy, arm B. The primary endpoint was overall survival, and the acceptable hazard ratio of segmentectomy to lobectomy was set to 1.54. We plan to recruit a total of 1,100 patients, and the secondary endpoint included uh, post-operative respiratory function at one year after surgery, elapsed free survival, proportion of local recounts. Our results will be considered positive if they show the non-inferiority of segment technique and if post-operative respiratory function is better than expected. The results will be also be considered positive if segment technique is shown to be superior regardless of the results of uh, post-operative pulmonary function. This slide shows the patient characteristics. No imbalance was observed between two arms. Half of patients had solid tumor with a consolidation tumor ratio of 1.0, and 90% had adenocarcinoma in both arms. This shows one of the main results of the study Overall survival, OS. OS was significantly better in the segmentectomy than in the lobectomy. The hazard ratio of segmentectomy to lobectomy was 0.663, and 95% confidence interval was less than 1.0. This result supported not only the criteria for predetermined non-inferiority, but also the great criteria for superiority of segmentectomy to lobectomy with a statistical significance. This is a false plot for the predetermined defined subgroup analysis of OAS. In most of the subgroups, segmentectomy tended to show better OS than lobectomy. This shows the results regarding a post-operative pulmonary function, which is a key secondary endpoint. We hypothesized that 
if he bring 1.0 at one year for segmentectomy should be better than lobectomy by at least 10%. However, the difference was only 3.5% as shown here. The benefit of segmentectomy over lobectomy in terms of respiratory function was not clinically significant. This shows the relapse free survival, RFLs, which is another secondary endpoint. As opposed to OS, there was no difference in RFS between the two arms. The five year RFS was 88% in both arms. We analyzed the pattern of tumor recurrence for two arms. The total tumor recurrence was significantly more common for segmentectomy and local recurrence in particular was significantly common. The proportion of the local recurrence was 10.5% in the segmentectomy arm and 5.4% uh, in the lobectomy arm. And this difference was statistically significant. This shows a summary of the cause of death in both arms. Overall death was more common in the lobectomy arm than in the segmentectomy arm at 14.9% versus 10.5%. However, lung cancer deaths were almost the same in two arms at 5.1% for lobectomy arm and 4.7% for segmentectomy arm. When we looked at other causes of death, we found that the death from other cancers was more common in lobectomy arm at 5.60% than in segmentectomy arm at 2.2%. As of now, we are not able to figure out uh, the exact mechanism to explain why the lobectomy group had a higher proportion of deaths due to another, other cancer. However, the more frequent occurrence of the other deaths after lobectomy balances out the higher frequency of local recurrence after segmentectomy. These are our conclusions. This Jacob WGOG joint trial is the first of phase three trial that demonstrated that segmentectomy provided significantly better overall survival over the lobectomy. This uh, current result indicates that semantectomy should be considered the standard mode of surgery for patients with small size peripheral clinical stage 1A non small cell lung cancer. We would like to express sincere gratitude to all the patients, families, and the collaborators joining this trial. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation that will be discussed by Dr. Sorry, Dr. Al Torki. Thank you, Ben. First of all, I would like to thank the AATS for the privilege of uh, having you discuss this really important paper. I would like to uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Asamura and his colleague on an incredible achievement. This, by, to my knowledge, is the largest surgical trial in general thoracic surgery and maybe in, in all surgery that asked a surgical question and completed it. They've randomized 1,100 patients in three years and now showed us data that on top of all that will change the standard of care, certainly in Japan and probably beyond Japan. So uh, incredible accomplishment. Uh, given the uh, time constraints, I'm gonna jump right into the questions. So uh, Hisao, I noticed that there was over 1,300 patients that were registered, but only 1,100 intraoperatively randomized. And the question is, why was the, those 13% of the registered patients not randomized? Did they have intraoperative uh, nodal metastasis, for example? Can you elaborate on that? I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to Dr. Toki. In this randomizer trial, Two step to registration was performed with the uh, provisional registration before surgery to look at the feasibility. 
followed by the uh, intraoperative registration and the randomization. And if the patient has the non-cancer uh, histology, he is not randomized, so excluded from the registration. And also, at the time of tracolum, if the uh, node metastasis was found, also he is not randomized. So these are reasons for 213 patients who are not randomized. I also saw that uh, 21 of the segmentectomy patients have been converted to lobectomy. I'm assuming that that's because positive dis nodal disease was detected. For the purposes of the secondary endpoint recurrence free survival, were they analyzed with the segmentectomy group or with the lobectomy group? Uh, of course, uh, this study was analyzed by the intent to treat policy. So uh, those patients were not analyzed as the segmentectomy arm. W were analyzed in the segmentectomy arm? No. With, uh, it's an original intent to treat analysis. Okay. There is also a difference in the local recurrence between a clinically significant, a significant difference, statistically significant in local recurrence, and probably clinically important difference than a, a doubling of the local recurrence. How yeah. do you explain that that did not reflect in the recurrence-free survival? There's no difference in recurrence-free survival. Yeah, uh, indeed, as you had just pointed out, the local recurrence rate was much more common for the segmentectomy, but the segment uh, local recurrence was not directly translated to the final death or something. So there might be some chance to treat the local recurrence by radiation or ablation or something. But anyway, local recurrence was controlled. And as a final result, uh, there has been no effect on the uh, death war zone. Yeah, I think that's a really, really important point that you can do salvage surgery provided in the small number of patients that have local recurrence. The, one more question that I have for you is the, the amazing findings in the primary endpoint of overall survival. If you look at your curves, you see that the curves diverge around year four, which is consistent with the fact that you know patients from lobectomy died of non-lung cancer related causes. I see that they died from cardiopulmonary disease. They died from other malignancies. And one has to wonder whether there was a difference or an imbalance in the comorbidities between the arms that made them more susceptible to that. Yeah. Yeah, in this study, indeed, there was some imbalance between uh, lobectomy arms and segmentectomy, which may be associated with the final result. Thus, from the other organ cancer was more common for lobectomy. That was a 31 patients, 5.6%. Then for segmentectomy, 12 patients, 2.2%. Also, as you have just uh, shown us, a non uh, malignant disease was more common for a lobectomy arm, 21 patients, 3.8%, than segmentectomy arm, 15 patients, 2.7%. I'm sorry, as of now, I'm not able to figure out whether uh, this imbalance uh, accounted for the difference in the final survival. I would like to analyze these points in detail as soon as possible. I will able to reply to you. Yes. Thank, you both. Thank you both. That was an outstanding discussion and we apologize for the tight time frame for the audience that is on or for those listening in the future. There's a more extended discussion that was pre-taped pre and we'll now move on to the second paper in the session. Thank you.